ponytails. Red, I scribbler. Scent by Dege the Mighty. Ponyville could not have asked for a better nightmare night. With the appearance of Princess Luna, to the sheer amount of joy she brought the young fillies and colts, Big Macintosh couldn't be happier. His only regret was not to be able to meet the princess in person. His cart ride duties had taken up his entire night, and while he won't deny he liked the attention some of the mares were giving him, he did wish he could have seen little Apple Bloom running around in her costume. He sincerely hoped Applejack would stop her from eating a lot of candy. His cart was starting to get a little heavier with each trip. He had reached the end of the route and decided to call it quits for the night. Sorry, girls, but ride's over. A few disappointed groans came from his passengers before they disembarked. Big Mac unhitched the cart from himself. As he cantered alongside the group to reunite with the rest of the festivities, a strange scent seemed to drift by. Hey, Big Mac, have any plans for the rest of the night? Nurse Red Heart asked. Her question was indeed innocent, given her tone. The other mares giggled amongst themselves, hearing a devious undertone that wasn't really there. Big Mac looked over at the other mares, raising an eyebrow. Raindrops and Cherryberry looked away innocently, while Cloud Kicker challenged the stare. Well, first, I need to find my sister, he said dismissively, turning his attention to the direction of the rest of the town all gathered around the games and talking with the princess of the night. Big Mac had made a mental note to introduce himself before night's end, as the six of them made their way back into town. It wasn't long before the group went on their merry way, leaving just Big Mac and Red Heart in search of the rest of the Apple family. Ponyville was quite alive in the dark, with festive lanterns littering the town from rooftop to street corner. Eager fillies and colts dashed from one door to another, hoping the ponies were still home and not already at the festival itself. Princess Luna was in sight, as well as the mass of ponies she had gathered. Now in the town proper, the red stallion basked in the scent of the multitude of sweets and the occasional perfume that dressed a passing mare. As they absorbed into the crowd, Big Mac caught sight of the scarecrow his sister was disguised as. Applejack, he called. The orange mare turned her head away from the apple bobbing tub before trotting up to him. Hi, Odie Mac. Your cart rides over? Yup. Big Mac looked to either side of his sister. Uh, where's Apple Bloom? She's with her friends. Pinkie Pie was leading a herd of foals all through town. Big Mac looked at her incredulously. Well, where are they now? Applejack bumped her hoof into his side. Oh, don't be so paranoid, Mac. They're fine. The only thing she needs to worry about is an upset tummy. Big Mac whipped his head around, that strange smell again. But it left as soon as it came. Did you smell that? Smell what? Red Heart asked, reappearing out of the crowd. Big Mac unconsciously took another sniff, and the smell of sweets returned. Well, howdy, Nurse Red Heart. I'm liking the pirate outfit, Applejack complimented. Why, thank you, Applejack. Your scarecrow actually looks rather comfy. Straw can feel real nice if you pike it up tight, Applejack stated, idly pressing against the puff on her chest. Do you mind if I borrow your brother for a second? Red Heart suddenly asked, before she began cantering away, not waiting for an answer. Raising his eyebrows at his sister in confusion, Big Mac opted to follow her. The nurse and farmer found themselves somewhat secluded from the rest of the crowd. Listen, Mac, about the other day... Red Heart started, hoping he would catch the hint. Big Mac was distracted, his nose raised to the air before he came crashing back down to earth. What? Oh yeah, look, uh, Miss Red Heart, uh, think nothing of it. It was a mistake. No harm done. Does it have to be a mistake? She mumbled to herself, looking away from him. Big Mac continued to scan the town for Pinkie Pie and whatever little group she was leading. There were plenty of ponies up and about. 
He saw raindrops chatting with Cloud Kicker near the punch, Carrot Top and others chatting with the princess, and Ditsy Doo trying to land a spider on the web. Caramel was having fun with Cherry Berry at the dance, Raindrops was cantering slowly towards the edge of town, and the cakes were trying their best of the pumpkin catapult. Still, there was no sign of his little sister anywhere. Is everything all right, Mac? Red Heart finally asked, seeming rather sheepish all of a sudden. Yeah, I just need to find Apple Bloom, Big Mac stated, as he began cantering towards the stage. Red Heart was close behind him. You really care about her, don't you? Of course. She's practically my... Big Mac halted his words as he caught a glimpse of Cheery Lee galloping towards Applejack. Concern and fear took him over. That can't be good. Come on! The two of them raced back to his sister. As they drew closer, Mac could hear shortened breaths and whimpering. Cheery Lee was speaking frantically to Applejack. Big Mac noticed the Cutie Mark Crusaders right next to her, and paranoia escalated with the absence of Apple Bloom. What's going on? He shouted, finally upon the group. We can't find Apple Bloom, cheerily cried. Go on, girls. Tell him what you told me. Scootaloo was the one who spoke up. We were with Pinkie Pie making our last rounds around Ponyville. There were only a few of us left once Pipsqueak had gone to bed. Pinkie was leading us back to town when... Sweetie Belle interrupted. When we started smelling this weird smell. It smelled kinda... kinda like... Big Mac froze as a shiver cascaded down the length of his spine. Like burnt hair. Yes, like some pony accidentally burned their mane or something. Sweetie shouted. When Cheryl Lee came to pick us up, we noticed Apple Bloom was gone. Scootaloo finished. Overwhelming panic enveloped the Red Stallion, and he could see it was consuming Applejack as well. Where were you guys when Cheryl Lee picked you up? Applejack asked, speaking a thousand words a minute. We were near Fluttershy's cottage, Cheerilee stated, trying her best to keep herself calm. Fluttershy's cottage, near the Everfree Forest. The mere thought shook Big Mac to his core. We need to go. Now. Red Heart stepped in. I'm coming with. If she's hurt... Don't even finish that sentence, Mac said, with a rather more threatening tone than the words warranted. Without another word, the group quickly galloped off in the direction of Fluttershy's isolated home. Big Mac's heart raced as he led the mares and fillies away from the town, the night getting increasingly darker. Glancing at the night sky, Big Mac noted tonight was a new moon. Maybe that's why she could be here, he mused. No moon to raise. The thought only distracted him slightly, and his nose was caressed by the scent of a singed may. The distressed group came upon the cottage like a train, almost trampling the ground beneath their hooves. As they came upon the door, Big Mac stepped aside to let Applejack knock, deciding the face of a friend would ease Fluttershy. Out of the corner of his eye, Big Mac spotted the yellow pegasus in question, trotting in a field in the distance, in the direction of Sweet Apple Acres. Without a word, he charged, galloping off in search of answers he hoped Fluttershy would have. Hi! Mayuk! Applejack shouted. Where are you going? The group's attention was diverted from the stallion as Fluttershy slowly opened the door. Mac's muzzle was assaulted by the odd odour, almost in full force as he approached the yellow pegasus. He noticed it had changed. The smell of burning hair was now mixed with some other strange scent, something akin to blood. He was only a short ways away from her as she passed under the shadow of a tree. He was almost directly upon her as the odour grew stronger and stronger, starting to burn his eyes. The shade from the tree had covered the pegasus entirely as she limped her way across the field. Big Mac opened his mouth to speak, but the stench grew almost palpable. His stomach threatened to vomit. It was impossible to see under the shade as he outreached his hoof to the very faint line of her frame. His hoof met nothing but air as his eyes cleared. The odour had vanished, as had the timid mare. He shifted his gaze before trotting around the trees a few times to ensure she wasn't hiding somewhere. But Fluttershy was nowhere to be found. 
Macintosh! He heard Applejack call from afar. Turning to face them, he could make out the shapes of the three mares. Applejack quickly pulled her brother into a hug as Cheerily and Red Heart came to a stop. Why did y'all just run off like by it? Big Mac struggled to find the words as he tried to piece together what he'd just seen. We found Apple Bloom, Red Heart said, obviously relieved. She went to Fluttershy's when she got lost. <sighs> Big Mac's sigh seemed to shake the earth for the mares. The tension in his body still tightened, absolutely confused with what he saw. His fear continued to climb the longer he stood there. It's very late. Fluttershy is letting us spend the night at her place, Cheerily said, as she began to trot back to the cottage. Big Mac followed on strangely shaking hooves. The stallion followed the four mares in shock. There was no real way he could wrap his head around it. Even thinking that his mind was simply playing tricks with him didn't seem a satisfying answer. Fluttershy had been there, and then she had not. The smell had nearly made him pass out, and then it had vanished. What had happened? He was broken from his terrified thinking by the sight of the cottage. The group strode inside and came across Fluttershy setting up makeshift beds for everyone. Scootaloo, Sweetie Belle and, thankfully, Apple Bloom were fast asleep on the couch, curled into little balls of fur. Big Mac was absolutely exhausted, more mentally than anything else. With a final good night, Fluttershy, whole and unlimping, left the group as she went upstairs. All Big Mac needed was a corner to rest his head on. The mares decided where to rest for the remainder of the evening. Applejack slept with the fillies, Cheerily slept next to the table, and Red Heart opted to sleep next to Big Mac himself. He sighed. Everything was fine now. It had all been some kind of mental trick, probably brought on by stress and worry for his sister. Everyone was safe and sound, and he could finally put this rather disturbing night behind him. Mac woke in a jolt. Rubbing his eyes, he could feel Red Heart's breath on his shoulder. He took a look outside, seeing it was just before Celestia's dawn. He unconsciously began to survey the room. Applejack still rested with all three fillies next to the couch. Red Heart rested herself against him, and Cheerily was sharing her blanket with Berry Punch. His eyes began to close once more, as sleep wished him back home. Everything was perfectly... Big Mac's gaze shot towards Berry Punch, her back to him. In the dim light of the dawn, she looked almost... yellow. Big Mac's breath began to shake as she lifted her head, turning her gaze towards him. He suddenly became aware of the scent of burning hair. That was Scent. It was written by Dege the Mighty and read by Scribbler with special guest voice actors Pegasus Pitch as the voice of Big Mac, Magpie Pony as the voice of Scootaloo, Wish Lotus as the voice of Sweetie Belle, and Gina Moravec as the voice of Nurse Redheart. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Um, one day earlier than usual, which is quite impressive because I thought that this story may not get dubbed at all this week because work just kind of exploded at me and various different things seem to have just demanded large proportions of my time, so... <laughs> yeah, this is the fic that very nearly didn't happen. Thank you very much to everybody who participated in this one. This is the first time I've worked with Pegasus Pitch, who is a tremendously talented voice actor, and his Big Mac impression... Oh my goodness. I mean, you've heard, just heard it for yourselves. <laughs> it's really hard not to be impressed by it. 
And then Magpie Pony? This is actually the first time that Magpie Pony has appeared on my channel, even though it's not actually the first time we've collaborated. Uh, she has... The stories that she has voiced for me, however, are still in production. And being that this is the third dark fic in my month of dark fics, this one turned out to be the one that goes first. And, oh, Wish Lotus. She does such a brilliant sweetie belle. And Gina Moravec, whom is actually the same story as Magpie Pony, that Gina and I have worked together quite a lot, actually. And yet, this is the first story that actually made it to air. <laughs> Magpie Pony, Wish Lotus and Gina are actually all in No Place Like Home, so you will be hearing their voices again. I don't know if you heard that, but it was a little bark from Suki, who is not very happy that she's locked in the house and not allowed to go out in the garden. She's actually not allowed in the garden unless she's on a lead at the moment, in case she runs about and damages something, which she's letting me know with a very grumpy look and, and the vague barking, talking noises. She's not happy. She wants to go out. She wants to go and chase squirrels. You're not going out to chase squirrels, okay? Leave them alone. What do they ever do to you? They exist, apparently. Right, okay. I must love you and leave you, because I have sitting next to me at this moment, sitting next to Suki as well, a big bag of paperwork that I have to do. When do I ever not have a big bag of paperwork to do? And because I'm going to go on to do that, I will simply say, please make sure that you go and listen to uh, episode 3 of Truth Be Told on The Lost Narrator's channel, and episode 3 of Something Sweet to Bite on Emogak's channel. They are both brilliant, and they're both really starting to pick up in the action stakes now. The other thing I would like to recommend this week is actually something that I have been reading for a while. It is a Tumblr called Lacerator Lyra, but given that this is the month of Dark Fix, it seems an appropriate time to recommend it. So, link in the doobly-doo in the description below, and please go and read it. I will warn you, it is incredibly dark and incredibly violent, so if that is not your cup of tea, steer clear. But if you do find that entertaining, and you like the art style, because it is a very curious art style that the artist uses, by all means, go enjoy it. It's perfect for Halloween. Be lovely to each other, and good night, everybody.